Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Wednesday. I believe it's the 4th of March. Lively day yesterday. Who saw that coming? I did not see that coming. Uh, Fed cut 50. Surprise cut. Tip my hat to uh, Jay Powell, um, who by all... Uh, prior accounts is a total pussy um, for pulling the trigger there on a uh, surprise cut. I imagine he was pressured by the world to do that. Obviously, the U.S. has has the most room to cut and controls sort of the the most important markets. So, it's trying to stabilize the U.S. market is a good way to try and stabilize um, the world. But of course, that didn't happen. But how are they supposed to know, right? Uh, anyway, tip my hat. Uh, even though in hindsight, it looks like a stupid move. Uh, who could have guessed it? Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the charts and see what's on tap today. We got the 10-year up here. Uh, we talked about it a couple days ago, and then we talked about it last night at the close. The 10-year yield is around 1%. In fact, it's 998%. We're just going to use this high here as our, um, as our stop. We are quietly short 10 years on a hysterically against, um, against the trend contrarian position totally not comfortable with it feels horrible um, we sold 136 to figures we have not been in the money like at all ever one of those positions uh, so I'm not sure I really want to recommend this one I just want to point it out this 1% um, I believe lowest in history for the yield um, but for those of you who are more bond inclined, check that out. Uh, short ZN. Looking to do the same thing in Boons. Um, on again, like a really horribly uncomfortable uh, short Boons. We're waiting for the yield DE 10Y to get to minus 75. We still have got a ways to go. Um, but uh, this fixed income is pretty darn stretched and one of our key premises in all of this is that um, this slow economic slowdown is going to is going to ripple into um, the fixed income world and we start with defaults and then we start with questions um, about the sustainability of debt uh, this is our big picture premise we're a long way from that now right now we're just looking um, we're looking at demand destruction as in people aren't buying anything because they're quarantined and events are canceled which then leads to supply you know and then things are closing which leads to supply chain uh, blow-ups, which is like the new, 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 new word, new, new phrase. Um, but if you go down to the secondary consequences or the tertiary consequences, medium and shitty companies now won't be able to service their debt, um, which means, you know, default and trouble and HY gets crushed and considering like there's a whole ocean of triple B minus out there does the uh, do people start questioning the entire uh, fixed income complex this is a huge call this isn't a call for today um, and this is just a little starter tester tiny little position that echoes this sentiment I've said enough about fixed income not my specialty anyway but just sharing some thoughts on it. Euro dollar, uh, we're long. Got up to uh, 112 14, I believe. Yeah, 112 14 last night. Been to 55 tonight, 55 85. Inside bar here. Um, 
we're totally okay with picking this up on low ones. There will be stops at 30 today. Uh, I only know that in a sense, the fact that that's where my stop was yesterday. Uh, we've tidied up the average on this position, so now we're able to buy down at 30. We don't think this is going to make a lower low today, so we'll be picking up dips uh, in euro, and we will also be adding through the highs. So it's a double, it's a double-edged sword here. Uh, we'll be paying 14s through the highs, and more importantly, we'll be paying 42s, which is the bingo, the real bingo number. So even if we get a bit of sideways uh, movement here the next couple of days. We do think uh, this 11240 is going to break this week. And once that breaks, uh, really opens things up for 114. So long euro is, um, is something that we like. The story is obviously U.S. has a lot more to, in distance that they can cut rates, and Europe can't cut at all. They literally, there's no point in cutting. Um, so, so it's just a pretty simple sort of binary type idea. Cable, don't really know. Um, don't really want to buy cable on a rate cut. UK can come out with some sort of cut at, at any time. I don't think they're in any rush to cut. Um, everyone's kind of leaning on the American cut. Hopefully that's going to work. No real view in cable. Dollar Swiss should go down. Um, basically the same trade as the Euro. You're also trading against um, the Euro Swiss bids from the SNB. As most of you who have followed me for a while know, I'm not that great at Dollar Swiss, so I don't know. Should go down, though. Uh, dollar Yen also, same premise. This should go down. We made a new low today, uh, 106.84. Here we are at 43. Again, we're expecting kind of an inside day. We don't think this is going to make a higher high. That obviously doesn't help anyone. One, no one's going to put their stop at 108.58, but you can sell high ones today. The obvious point is 65, which is the sort of prior low. Um, so between 65 and 85, you can get short some dollar yen. Uh, Euro yen, no dog in that fight. Sterling yen, we had the shorts, but then we were out of them. Uh, we do believe this dollar czar is a buy on dips. How is the South African? Can Rand going to cope with what we think is going to be a global slowdown? I don't think it's going to cope well. It's not the most robust currency. Um, the budget is in tatters. The political system is like cuckoo land, uh, lacking in uni unity and leadership and all kinds of uh, negatives. Uh, their debt is close to be being downgraded at any moment. They can't keep the power on. I could go on. Um, but, so, I mean, we think uh, kind of accumulating dollar rand between 20 and the figure, if you see it, uh, is a smart, smart play. We're bearish Aussie. Don't know really how to express it. We have some short Aussie yen on. Um, not really sure how to express this I guess I mean the obvious we had uh, we had 52 uh, offers yesterday uh, it didn't get done we do think this 66 60 is gonna hold but again it's far so it doesn't really help for today but selling high ones in Aussie seems seems correct Aussie yen stubborn stubborn little bitch not really uh, Not really doing what we needed it to do. Got down to 30 last night. I'm sure that was the GDP. Um, and now here we are after an 08 print. Your stop now has to be above 53. Short as a yen. I'm really disappointed with this uh, pullback here. Uh, we'll just have to see how things go going forward. Hopefully you have a decent average. You had plenty of time to trade around this thing, um, especially in that hysteria after the rate cut. Gold, uh, I'm just like saddened uh, that I don't own more gold, <clears throat> but I didn't have the balls 
and I was a bit nervous um, around the figure in 95 and obviously with a rate cut gold just goes through the roof gold's going to continue to go higher you want to buy gold on dips store gold wherever you can store it but I'm not chasing this now 1644 we got other we got other uh, fish to fry um, but gold's going to go higher and then finally our pal uh, S&P's very hectic yesterday uh, it's one of those days I wish I worked in a very busy trading room um, instead of a sort of a quiet family office uh, situation The move up to 40 for the rate cut, which caught everyone by surprise. Uh, move up to 40, and then the move down to 129.80. Uh, took some time. It was very choppy, very very lively. Um, you know, excellent uh, trading conditions. If you're a professional trader, if you're not a professional trader, it gets a little bit uh, unnerving. I could see that on Twitter. A lot of the retail people were shitting themselves. Um, but this uh, this just looks like a sell on rally now. The 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 two hundred day is around twenty fifty, so you can kind of just use that as your sell area. Uh, we just sold some here um, up at thirty nine, so we're going to be kind of thirty nine forty nine fifty nine today, trading this to an average, uh, just like we did yesterday, um, on the short side. All right, I've said enough. Uh, we do have some final PMIs out today in the calendar, which will affect the euro, so heads up on that. And then we have the Bank of Canada today, who is going to cut either 25 or 50. That's uh, eight hours away. Check in on Twitter to see where we stand on the Bank of Canada as we get closer to the time. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.